Real quick before we get into the video today, follow me on Instagram for a chance to win this phone and a whole bunch of other awesome stuff I'm giving away this month. Hey, it's Andrew Huang. I'm trying to come up with the background music for a future video of mine, and I decided to go with this sort of quirky, cute jazz thing. So I spent all morning playing my guitar, working out this melody, and I find myself in an interesting place right now because I have an entire melody for a whole song written and very little idea of what chord should go underneath it. The reason why this music is coming together this way is because I haven't really studied jazz. I know music theory, I love chords and I've just learned about them because they're so interesting to me, but I haven't really learned about jazz. And I kind of like that because I do know a lot about music and so I'm always in this analytical listening mode. Whenever anything's on, I'm figuring out how did they produce that? What's the chord progression? What are the intervals in the melody? How much reverb are they using? All kinds of nerdy musical questions. And normally I can answer most of them, but when it comes to jazz, it's the one style of music where there's still magic, where I can still still just enjoy it the way I imagine normal people normally enjoy normal music. So I've been sitting here with my guitar for a little while trying to figure out the chords and the challenge is I'm humming the melody now and playing the chords along with it and finding possibilities that I like, but it's hard to remember all the different options and the order that they go in and I don't know if you can hear the truck that's beeping outside right now. So my plan is to record the whole melody by itself and then add the chords on my computer. And that way I can explore multiple options. I can tweak little notes here and there if they don't seem quite right. And best of all, I won't have to rely on my memory at all. In my last video, I talked about how a lot of songs have fewer than 15 notes in their melodies. And so when you're writing a melody, there are really only so many options for what you would put in it. The same thing is kind of true about chords. There are a lot more chords out there because you can combine notes in so many different ways, but at the end of the day, the chord you want is out there. And if you have to find it by brute force, then that's the way it is. Let's record the guitar melody. So I recorded four takes of the melody and quickly spliced together the best parts. Also, this is a little tip or a secret of how I work so fast and create so much. Unless something goes horribly wrong, I limit myself to four takes of anything. Guitar, vocals, drums, whatever. I do practice enough to get comfortable before recording, but a lot of the times it is like today where I'm putting down my material within a couple hours of coming up with it. And there's definitely ways that this is not ideal. Some music comes across better when you've had months to work on it and practice it and get familiar with it. But I prioritize sharing my ideas pretty much above everything else, and I have a lot of ideas, so that's been the pattern for the last 10 years. I just write and record and put out as much as possible and immediately forget how to play it all. So we're at the part of the process where I'm gonna figure out the chords for this piece. I know exactly the feeling that I'm going for. I think there is an exact progression that I'm looking for out there. And it's just a matter of tuning into it a little bit by what I already know could work and a little bit just by trial and error. So I'm adding in a software piano and I'm just going to mess around with what notes go underneath my melody. Have a listen to this little bit here. key of D, which is the first chord, it immediately goes from there to E7, which is a bit out of key, it has a G sharp in it, and then it goes to E minor 7, which is back in key, but it's pretty rare for a chord to go from the major to the minor version of itself. And this was all implied by the melody because of the movement of the notes in it. Some melodies really strongly indicate a certain progression, like this one does, while others 
can be reharmonized in a lot of different ways. And one's not better than the other, and one's not easier to write than the other. I think experimenting and using a multitude of different approaches is great for songwriting. Today I started with a whole melody first, other times I'll start with a chord progression, sometimes I'll start with a little piece of one or the other and keep going back and forth and building something based on how they feed off of each other. I know a lot of you guys are musicians yourselves, I would love to know how you go about writing and whether these approaches resonate with you, if you do one or the other more, if you have an entirely different way of doing things that I haven't touched upon at all here, leave a comment. Time to go back to figuring out chords. So I'm pretty happy with where I'm at with this progression now, but I think it's gonna take me a little time to learn the chords on guitar and practice those up and record them. So I'll share the final piece with you in a future video. In terms of hacking jazz though, I have a few tips if this is something you wanna try. First thing is, if you have a chord and it needs to be a little jazzier, the number one thing to try is just adding a seventh. Sometimes a ninth works as well. If, like me, you already have your melody, you can figure out what chords go nicely underneath it just by looking at what notes are occurring over half a bar and thinking about what chords share some or all of those notes. And the last thing is to learn about diminished, half diminished, and augmented chords. I'm a huge music theory nerd, so I went into this already knowing what those are, even if I didn't know exactly how they're always able to be used in a jazz context. That was the part that was mainly trial and error in this process, but you do quickly start to notice patterns of where these chords fit in between other ones. Back in the day when I used to make my living by producing music for other people on commission, I used a lot of these techniques a lot. I was hungry to make it as a musician, as a producer, and I would just take any job that came my way. People would find me and ask for a bossa nova song, a swing jazz song, a salsa song, and I would say, no problem, give me two weeks. Because I knew a lot of music theory, I trusted myself, and I'm stubborn as f And so I knew I could just figure it out. There are a finite number of instruments and notes and chords out there. So I would absorb a bunch of reference material and just smash my brain against my computer until what I had made sounded like that. And again, not the best or the only way to make music, but if you're determined, a great way to learn. Hope you're subscribed. I'll be back with a new video in a few days.